Hi there. Now in this video I want to talk to you about inverse elements. If there is a situation where let's say we take an element A and under a binary operation star if you combine it with this particular element which we'll just say A to the minus 1 here for the time being. If you combine it with A and you do it the other way around you get back E the identity element for the operation star, then a to the minus 1 here is called the inverse of a. So the inverse of an element always brings you back to the identity. It's also important to realize that this notation, pronounced the inverse of a, isn't, as you might think, a to the power minus 1, 1 over a. Okay, so just think of this as pronounced the inverse of A. Now you should already be familiar with inverse elements. For example, for addition. Remember I showed you that the identity element was 0. It left anything unchanged. 3 add 0 would still return 3. So now that we know the identity element, Let's say finding the inverse of an element is done like this. What we would have, let's say we take 4 and we're looking for its inverse. Let's say that inverse is denoted by the question mark for the time being. 4 plus its inverse is going to equal its inverse plus 4. And it must come back to the identity element for addition, which we now know is 0. And so working out what the inverse of 4 is, it's got to be minus 4. 4 add minus 4 gives 0, minus 4 add 4 gives 0. So we can say then that the inverse of 4 under addition is minus 4. If we take any real number under addition, its inverse will be the negative of that particular number. So if you had a, then the inverse of a under addition is minus a. Now we can do a similar thing for multiplication. Remember for multiplication the identity element E was 1. It left anything unchanged. If we had 3 times 1 would still get 3. So if we took another real number, let's say 5 this time, and we wanted to find its inverse under multiplication. 5 times its inverse would be exactly the same as its inverse times 5. Okay, And that should come to the identity element for multiplication, which we've seen is 1. So what would be the inverse of 5? Well, the inverse of 5, if we rearrange the equation, would be 1 fifth. 5 times 1 fifth equals 1 fifth times 5 equals 1. So the inverse of 5 then, under multiplication, is 1 fifth. If we had any real number, a, its inverse would be 1 over a. Except you couldn't have 0 because 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So 0 has no inverse. Now next I want to look at working out inverses when you have a table. Something like this one here. What I want you to do is try and find the inverse of each element in this table. So I'll give you a moment just to look at this. Remember you've got to find out what the identity element is first though before you can go ahead to work out what the inverse of each element is. So just take a moment to pause the video and when you come back you can check your methods against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So first of all then, we've got to find out what the identity element is. And I showed you in the previous video that to find the identity element, all you've got to do is look in the table and see where any row duplicates the row at the top here and where any column duplicates the column on the outside here. And you'll notice it occurs under the element B. A, B, C, D is repeated down there and A, B, C, D here is repeated across the top. So the identity element then is equal to B. So now that we've got that we should be able to find the inverse element say of A. 
A combined with its inverse should be exactly the same as its inverse combined with A. And it's got to equal the identity element, which we've seen is B. So looking in the table, what do you have to combine A with to get B? Well, you can see it's got to be D. A combined with D gives B, and D combined with A gives you B. So the inverse of A is, in fact, the element D. Let's look at the inverse of B. What do you need to combine B with to get back B? Well, you can see from the table, it is, in fact, B itself. B combined with B gives B. And this is a result that is always true. The inverse of the identity element is the identity element itself. It's what we call a self-inverse, by the way, because it's the same value. When we look at the inverse of C now from the table, C combined with something gives us the identity element B. Well, again, we've got a self-inverse because you can see that C combined with C gives B. So the inverse of C then is C, a self-inverse. And lastly, the inverse of D. What do we combine D with to give us B? Well, looking at the table, you can see that it is A. When you do A combined with D, you get B. And when you do D combined with A, you get B. OK, so that's an example then on finding the inverse elements from a table. Now, you could be asked to find the inverse elements of, say, A when you're given a binary definition. Like in this example, if A star B equals A plus B plus AB, where A and B are real numbers, we've got to find the inverse of A. So with this one, you might like to have a go at it. So just give me a moment to pause the video, and when you come back, you can check your methods against mine. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So the first thing we need to do is to work out what the identity element would be for this binary definition. So I'll just put a subheading here that we're looking for the identity. And we'll call that element then E. So that would mean that if we were to take A and combine it with E, we would expect to get back A. It leaves the element unchanged. So using the definition here, we replace the B with the E, and we therefore have A plus E plus AE, and that's going to equal A. If I subtract A from both sides, that's just going to leave me with E plus AE equals 0. And I can factorise that, and I'd be left with E times all of 1 plus A, and that would equal 0. So because we've got a product here of two factors equaling zero, then it must be this factor, E, that equals zero. So therefore, E equals zero. Now that I've got the identity element, I can work out the inverse then of the element A. So I'm going to let Y equal the inverse of A. So I'll say let Y equal the inverse of A there. And so, therefore, we know that if I take A and combine it, say, with Y, we should get back the identity element, which we've just seen is 0 for this binary operation. And I now need to use the definition up here, replace the B with the Y, and so, therefore, we end up with A plus Y plus AY equals 0. And if I subtract A from both sides, I get Y plus A, Y equals minus A. And then factorising on the left, pulling out Y as a common factor, I'd have Y times all of 1 plus A equals minus A. And if I divide both sides by 1 plus A, I end up with Y, which equals the inverse of A. So put that in. That would equal minus A all divided by 1 plus A. So the inverse of any element A, then, is equal to minus A all over 1 plus A under this binary operation. But we've got to be careful here because you can't divide by 0. So therefore, it is restricted. 
a cannot equal minus 1. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea now then on what we mean by an inverse element, its notation, and how we can work it out from a table, and also when we're given the binary definition. Don't forget, you always need to be aware of what the identity element is before you can work out the inverse elements. Okay?